Hey, how's it going? So today we're going to be setting up Windows 10 for mining on this little mini PC I have here that I use for CPU mining Avian coin and it's as you can see it's uh, modified it's one of those little ultra small form factor computers uh, like this one except it's got a big fan sitting on the side because I added a Noctua uh, what is it? NHU9 so I removed the original cooler out of that and put that into it so it's got a quad core Xeon 4 core 8 thread 16 gig RAM so it's quite a beefy little machine for its size so um, yeah we're gonna go through the process of downloading a specific version of Windows burning it to USB or copying it to USB to make it making it bootable and then running my script and just giving you instructions on how to do everything so this is part one of two part two is kind of getting the mining software working and everything and this is just um, yeah, getting Windows installed and running my script to get it modified and good to go all right so let's get going okay so First up, what we're going to do, I'm just uh, recording off my desktop, uh, rather than use the phone camera, so it just makes things a little bit easier. So we're going to download Rufus, and we're going to use this to make the ISO image that we're going to download uh, bootable on USB. So let's go to Rufus up the top there, Rufus.ie, download. Save as. Incidentally, I've already saved it, so usually you just go, yep, and open file. And there we go, so I've downloaded the portable version from earlier. So um, once you've got that ready to go, we're going to go to your website. Um, as shown here, www.hei. etc. etc. This downloads a really cool tool that lets you download any Microsoft Windows ISO image from the Microsoft website. How it does it, I do not know, but it works and I've been using it for quite a few years. It's got all the different, see down here, that's a screenshot of it, all the different versions of Windows. So the specific one we want is the current as of uh, April 2022. The, uh, what was that? Jeez, I can't remember. Um, H, sorry, 21H2 V2, I think it should be that one. So that's the current ISO image, and that's the one that we'll use. That's the one I recommend you use. Um, and we're going to use this tool to download it because, as we know, the Microsoft download tool will always download the latest one. You don't get to pick which version. So if they make some major changes in the future, at least we know... We can stick with this one, which is good. And the script that I've written to also works on this version of Windows. So let's uh, get that. Down. So yeah, you usually download it. Where from? Oh, there we go. There's the link. D download the latest version. I think I downloaded it a few weeks ago, but let's do it again. Why not? Save. Done. ISO downloaded, open file. And that's it, no installation, it's a standalone. So you go Windows 10. Uh, feel free to have a look around too, it's got Windows 7, 8.1, all the insider, all the different versions of Office. Yeah, other stuff. I don't know if it does server in that. Windows Admin Center. Yeah, we need to have a look at this stuff. Just don't have time. So anyway, we're going to go Windows 10, select Edition, and we've got 21H2 November update is the latest one. Uh, you can you try using the latest one, but like I said, the script that I've written to modify Windows works best on this version. So you go confirm. Yada yada, choose what language, international, confirm. 
and you get a choice 32 or 64 bit which is 64 bit and we go save so as you can see I've already downloaded it here so I'm not going to download it again so yeah you usually go save downloads it to the folder and done then you can once you need to keep this window open too while it downloads because it's got like a built-in downloader thing kind of like a like a website web uh, sorry browser all right then we come to Rufus so I've already installed an 8 gigabyte USB drive so I've also got an SSD external there but it's 8 gig um, is enough for this I don't know I haven't tried it on a four no I don't think four is big enough so use your 8 then you got a boot selection disk or ISO image please select so we're going to choose that and we go select and click on select uh, we got star.isa so yeah we find the one we want that's today so that's the right one open that's right uh, UEFI on there that's right cheap leave it as GPT volume label and that's pretty much it you know, press start yep and uh, deleting partitions doing its thing so yeah anyway I'm just gonna pause this this takes about 15 20 minutes and once this is finished I'll be right back and we'll carry on all right that's finished now so we can remove the USB drive yeah which one is it firebird I guess it is that one Devices in use. Yeah, it shouldn't be. There we go. All right, let's go out to the shed and install Windows. Okay, so we're back out the shed with our little mini miner, which is a modified Lenovo. Uh, what do they call ultra small or something or other? So first thing we do. Um, installing Windows on a rig, disconnect your Ethernet because when Windows installs, it's going to want to install a Microsoft account. You do not want to do that because it'll lock you into wanting to install one. So let's get USB in and power it up. sure if it'll automatically boot should do I think it was set to boot from USB um, you just have to go on your bias and set boot devices USB disk come on Yeah, look at that Lenovo. It's like, I know you're a Lenovo. What's going on in the background? Why aren't you happy? All right, let's try to turn it off. And go back on again. Press F8. See if we can get something happening. Interrupt normal start. Press Enter. All right. So before, press enter to interrupt, interrupt the startup. Yep, there we go. What do we got? F1, tend to bias. F10, uh, F12. That's what we want. Except this is one of those funky keyboards. So how do you do F12? Uh, there we go. 
All right, so that should boot off USB eventually when it's ready. <sighs> All right, I'll be right back. I'm just going to put the phone down so I can use two hands and quickly sort this out. Okay, well that was really unusual. Um, I literally just put the phone down after that previous shot and this popped up, except there was no... It's like Lenovo have locked out the little window spinny thing. Anyway, not to worry. English, United Kingdom, and I don't have a mouse, I just realised. No, I do. UK, don't mind the UK. Still now. Setup is starting. It's funny, this version of Windows has got like a more of a purple background, I notice, than a, than a blue. Not sure where you can see that. Like sit. Alright, we want to custom install. Uh, delete format. Yep. Oh, it's doing something. Oh, I wish this, how do you just quickly do it? Delete. Alt D. I should actually go get a mouse. Uh, Alt D. Left. Okay. And I allocated. Alt D. Okay. Alt D. Left. Okay. And there we go. Two hundred. 40 gig hard drive. So that's going to install the Windows files. Once that's done, it's up the next prompt. I'll uh, get right back. Be right back. Uh, you'd think with all this stuff I've got, I'd have a spare mouse just, you know, sitting around somewhere. But nope, apparently not. Everything but. Even got a riser just sitting around. But no mice. <laughs> okay, one mouse later. And we're back. So we've got a uh, UK, hey, we're in Australia, mate. So always set it properly. Where is it? Aruba, Australia. Yes. Just a reminder: make sure that Ethernet plug is unplugged. Keyboard layout, UK. I can't. I think Australia uses US. I can't remember. Doesn't really matter. No, we don't want another layout. So we go. I don't have internet. Go continue with limited setup. Now I use the word mine. You can change it to like mine number you know, 420 or something. I don't know, whatever you want. Next. And create a password. But if we just press next, you won't need one. So we'll turn all this off. I mean, we're going to turn all this off using my script anyhow. But, uh, you know, turn it off, might as well. No, we do not want Cortana, so we're going not now. Hi. We're getting everything ready for you. Imagine this in the, in the future. This, might take so, this is what you might see when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> Part of the matrix. <sighs> this might take several minutes or seconds. Come on. Um, just thinking, what do I need? Next step we're going to do is basically download a program called Type VNC, which is like a remote desktop program. It's originally from Linux environment, but they've ported it over to Windows, thank God. So we're not, we're not going to use uh, desktop, remote desktop, because it's one of those things that... Oh, and I just found a mouse. I just kicked it. <laughs> There's my mouse. So anyway, um, yeah, remote desktop's one of those things which you just... I just don't trust it. There's always vulnerabilities being discovered on it. Kind of like the print server. Um, you know, what you call it, print spooler service or whatever. The more services you can remove, the better. 
So here we are, we're at the desktop, so now you can plug your Ethernet in. Plug it in. The fan's cruising away. Alright. So now we're going to go to... Uh, maybe later. So with a script I've made, it makes setting up... Do you want it to be discoverable? No. So the script I've made, what's that? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I forgot what I was going to say now. Damn it. Sorry, this is totally unscripted while I do this. I kind of just do it, correct, correct it as I go. Complete setup. Can you hear signing in? All right, we're going to go Google. And we're going into uh, uh, yeah. type. Just Google type VNC. And the first one, uh, VNC compatible free remote control. So we go to download now. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, 64 bit. Uh, it's downloading. <sighs> waiting, waiting. I do have this on a USB stick. It was pretty quick at a. By the time I find it and bring it back out here, just as quick to download it. Open file. All right. So basically, if you you want a remote control your mining computer from your desktop. So we only want to set up the server for type VNC. And this is good, this is the first thing I install because then you can do everything remotely and you don't have to stand around in a you know, shed full of mosquitoes at night time. Uh, okay, custom. So a type VNC viewer. Again, the, um, the motto I follow is keep everything, if you're not using something, just remove it or disable it because it, um, if someone manages to hack in, gives them less of a surface for attack. Type VNC viewer server, that's what we need. Next. Um, configure system layers, yep. Yeah. Uh, system, so that's defaults are fine. Install. Yes, da 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 da. Uh, password, you can type whatever password you want in. Because this is just a test practice, I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't re recommend you do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and that's it. So now we can minimise that. The only thing we have to do before we can remote in, get a Command prompt up and type IP config. Okay, so we want to find our IP address, which is right here 192.168.34. Alright, so we can uh, pretty much leave this now and go back to the desktop. Okay, we are back, so we're going to go into Type VNC viewer and type in the IP address of 34, which is what we saw before. Password 123456, which you shouldn't use. And there we go, we have our remote desktop connection. So, using this, we have full remote desktop and also an easy way to transfer files through an FTP style interface. So, um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so I'll plug my USB drive with my script in. You also download the script from a. Uh, I'll put it in the links in the description. We got here Windows mining. Oh, sorry. Mike's Rigs Weebly .com. It's my dilapidated and unmaintained blog site, but the easiest way to just chuck some files on for people to download. So if you go into other stuff. Come down to Windows for Mining Files, and I've added the files there for you. So there we've got the 
the uh, script I wrote just here. I'll keep the latest version on here as I find things to add to it. And in all honesty, it's probably constantly going to have things added to it. I've already got more ideas for it. And I've also got a text file of like a checklist. So let's just open it here. There we go. Yeah, this is pretty much a run through of what I've been doing in this video. So uh, connect to the internet, allow updates. Yep. Disable unwanted things. Stop Windows notification. Done in script. All right. First thing we're going to do. The, the script we'll start the script up shortly but we're just going to do everything that you can't do with a script unfortunately first thing is turn off 3d acceleration in the edge browser because we don't want that because that'll just hog gpu resources which we do not want so uh, what's this settings should read my instructions should know where is it settings system and performance apparently Da -da -da -da, where is it? Performance. There we go. Use hardware acceleration when available. So we want to disable that. Continue running where sessions closed. No. Startup boost. No. Optimize performance. Now this is actually different to um last time I looked. Alright, so that's, like I said, the main things. Use hardware acceleration or 3D. Make sure that's off. Alright, we're done. So we can close that now. Let's go back to large virtual memory. That's done. You, this is one thing you have to do for mining Ethereum. I'm not, don't, not sure about the others, but you need to make your virtual memory 16 gig. Otherwise, it does some really weird shit <laughs> to the point I was. I had a 3060 Ti that I actually plugged into this computer to test and I was mining on it and it was just doing some really weird stuff and that's what fixed it so you need to change your virtual memory to 16 gig maximum 20 so my script will do that for you so won't worry about that disable power settings the script will do that okay this is a big one if you're running uh, the driver 470.05 because you're using a 3060 version 1 and you need that driver to remain this is how you stop windows update which i actually leave, a lot of people disable it but i actually leave it enabled uh, there's a there's a lot of pros and cons for it unfortunately windows is a bit like that i really should get back into Linux and use that but um, you yeah, know I'm familiar I use Windows at work all the time so I'm more familiar with Windows for now uh, okay so da -da 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 -da. stop Windows changing drivers with Windows updates especially important for the driver as I said before type CMD to the search bar run as administrator CMD no, I can't wait CMD, run as administrator. Yes. Da, 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 da. Choose review. GP edit MSC. All right, this is the group policy editor. So I cannot remember where to go in. So fortunately, I've written it down. <laughs> Alright, computer configuration, administrative templates. And uh, Windows components, Windows update. Alright, now somewhere in here it's got uh, drivers. Here we go. Do not include drivers with Windows updates. So, I mean, apart from that 470.05 driver, um, there are specific drivers out there I found recently that do perform a little bit better. And I actually tested one of them out. And yeah, sure enough, I'd say it's faster, but definitely um, more reliable. Um, at the you know keeps like a consistently higher hash rate rather than jumping around as much. 
Enable this policy to not include drivers with Windows quality updates. Okay, so that's what we want. Apply, okay, and exit. Next thing, disable hibernation, done in script. Run mining script, yes, we'll do that. Uh, even that's done in the script now. So I had a massive list of stuff and I slowly went through each thing one by one. I thought, right, what can I put into my script? Oops. Um, all right, let's transfer the file across. So we go transfer file. I think it's X. There we go, mining Windows, C drive, users, mine. We're going to run it from a command prompt. No, no, we don't have to. We'll put it on the desktop. File system repair. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. Nice and quick and easy to upload files using the FTP type thing. All right, here's the big thing. My script. Right click on my script. Once it's on the desktop or wherever, downloads. Has to run it as administrator. It will actually detect if you run it as a... Ah, oh, it's doing that. It did this earlier. <sighs> Sorry about this. This echo is off, but it still echoes everything, which is bizarre. So what I had to do... Uh, on desktop... <laughs> All right, so we type echo off. I can't be bothered diagnosing this right now. I just want to quickly do this. I was showing a guy at work <coughs> earlier today. I did the same thing. All right, so here we go. So Windows Mining Edition. I've got my version. Da, 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 da. See here, it's got a script appears to not be run as administrator. That doesn't matter because what it does is when you run a batch file, like if you right click on that and go run as administrator, it will always start in a certain directory in Windows System 32. So all it does is look at whether that folder or a file in that folder exists to determine if it's in administrator or not. So that's not a big deal. All right, so you got your main menu. You got the various registry tweaks and services tweaks under number one. So that's the, the main part of it. Windows Defender options. You can remove Defender, which I don't recommend. So, or create a Defender folder exceptions for mining software. So what that, and it will go in number two actually. Disable Windows Defender, not really recommended. So no, we don't want to do that. But what we will do, Oh, click. You can tell I've used my script lately. Uh, what are number two, Defender Options. So we're going to create an, a folder with an exception. So create a folder on the desktop called Mine with Windows Defender Exceptions to stop it flagging miners and batch files as malware. So anything you put into that folder will not be flagged as a virus by your antivirus. So that's done, and it can also flag the downloads folder for the same thing. Uh, so if you download like T-Rex into the default downloads folder, uh, Windows Defender won't delete it, so we'll go yes. Usually you have to go down here, it's a bit of a pain in the, pain in the ass, you have to go into Windows Security, create the folder, mark it as safe, but here it just does it all for you. So this is still an earlier version of my um, script, so I still need to tidy it up and whatnot. And work out why that echo thing was still not working before. All right, we've got number two, Windows Update Options. Disable and re-enable Windows Updates. I recommend leaving it enabled. I don't see, I've never had any issues with leaving it enabled. Um, and if anything weird kind of happens, you know, or serious loopholes, they can at least patch it. So some people would completely disable it, but it's up to you for your reasons, whether you enable it or disable it. Windows hardening is a new one. Um, I'm currently working on that. Uh, it's taking a little bit more time than expected, so that won't actually do anything at the moment. Also got perform all tasks without prompt. 
except disabling Windows Updates and Windows Defender. So those two options you can go set yourself. And I've also got what which we've already gone through. Show instructions to manually perform tweaks that the script cannot reliably perform. So I'll sh show you in menu one, essential tweaks, which are essential to mining. Optional tweaks, which are just quality of life. Uh, for example, enabling dark mood. Um, view all file, file, um, file extensions, just small stuff. Uh, option three, remove Windows telemetry, tracking and related services. So the reason I put menus for all this stuff is you might have Windows at home and you just want to stop Windows tracking what you're doing. So you can just use that option and also remove unnecessary software. Only use that if you're going to, if you really want to strip Windows back because that will remove everything, including the calculator, all this stuff you see, Office, Skype, um, email, it will remove as much as it possibly can and I'm still adding stuff to that list. So anyway, we'll go, um, which, uh, which one? we'll go through essential tweaks and we'll show you this. So it disables hibernation, which is you don't want your computer going to sleep while you're mining. It disables Windows consumer features. So every now and then you'll notice when your Windows turns on, it comes up with this thing saying, oh, log into your Microsoft account and get more, yeah, get more out of Windows, which stops the system booting. It just sits there. So this removes that. Uh, disables all the sidebar notifications, sets your virtual memory. 16 gig initial, 20 gig max, which like I said earlier, you need. Disables all the sleep tires and specifically the PCIe sleep mood. You do not want your video cards or you don't want Windows putting your PCI Express ports to sleep. Well, your mining also disables unneeded services such as Print Spooler, which is the old, you're not going to print from your mining computer and Print Spooler is a very known uh, vulnerability. So go okay, yes, performing changes. There you go, that's it. through oh yeah that's just um changing a page file it goes through removes everything and it's pretty quick then back to the main menu so there's a heap of stuff that it does so i'm just going to choose perform all tasks without prompt which is everything basically under that menu one uh but again it doesn't remove defender or touch windows updates so let's do that and It'll even remove this search bar here. Um, it re removes quite a lot. So here we go. Five. Do you want to? Yes. Disabling games and programs. And here you go. PowerShell pops up. Removes all the crud. Now you will get a couple of red screens come up from time to time if, some, if you've already removed something. Um, for some reason I'm having trouble removing the Windows Store. Even though it's technically disabled it still has the icon and you can still run it. So I need to look into that a little bit further. Uh, but it stops the services. Yeah, here we go. What's that one for? Uh, people. Yeah, Xbox. I noticed that last time too. This release of Windows that um, you cannot remove the Xbox software that's built into Windows anymore. So that's another thing I'll look into further. For some reason Microsoft made it more permanent part of Windows. Still chugging along. Deployment fail. So all this is doing is um yeah PowerShell is just using the commands to uninstall all this stuff. So it'll try and it blindly tries to remove stuff so even if it doesn't exist or it can't remove it, it'll still try, but just come up with an error. And there we go, now it's continued. Here's a heap of stuff. Um, that's normal. Removing OneDrive even. Stopping Katana. So, I'm not, I'm not going to go through every single thing that this does. You can read the... It's a, just a batch file, so you can literally go through it and make sure... You know, I haven't sneaked any commands in there that are going to create any vulnerabilities which is why I left it as a batch file because you know you can just open it up and have a look if you know what you're reading 
This is going through, and you can also, by looking at it, you can see exactly the things it's removing, even customize it for yourself or whatever. So that's done now, so it only takes a couple of minutes. And quit, and it should automatically prompt, say yep, due to the changes performed, yes. So now it will reboot. It is, we shut down less than a minute. Let's see if I can beat it. All right, so we're pretty much almost there now. So everything that script I used to do manually, and it used to take me what, an hour or more. <laughs> All my registry patches and things I used to manually do. So like I said, I just went, had a list of things I'd do. So I just went through them one by one to see if I could automate them through the script. And I could, most of it, apart from couple of things that I've gone through already. This shouldn't take long to reboot. It's pretty quick. So there you go. So Windows Dark Mode's activated, the search bar is now gone. So if you want to run anything, because you know obviously I've still got it on my desktop computer, just press on the little Windows button and type what you want to run. So if you want to run a command or run It'll still bring that up and search for it. CMD, you run a command prompt, run as administrator. And yeah, so here's our mine folder. So all your mining stuff you want to put in that folder. The antivirus will not touch it. Oh, here's another thing. It, my script adds a little, uh, this PC icon just to get into things faster because it doesn't do that by default, which is a pain in the ass. So uh, there we have it. Um, that's pretty much it. You just have to go in your BIOS, make sure it's set to power on after blackout. So that way if there's ever a blackout, it'll fire up. Now there are, you can automatically, I'm going to do this in the future, probably add it to my script. You can set Windows up to automatically run something on boot up. And the way you do that, we'll go shell start up so if you place a batch file in this folder it will run it when windows starts up so that's what i do this actual mini computer used to be a well, still is but i just don't use it as a, a cpu miner so the cpu miner didn't require administrator permission so you could just drop the batch file in here um, i also used to have a command on it which was handy to write a log file to the desktop each time. So I'll just show you that quickly. Oh yeah, there's your startup folder. Location there if you want to, which is pretty much when you type shell startup, that's the folder that it's going to. Um, oh, I did actually save the uh, batch for no, not to worry. Can't show you then. <laughs> so anyway, that's um, pretty much how you set it up. So if you want to copy uh, miners across, so we'll go to my USB stick that's got the mining software on it. Go to my users, mine, desktop, mine, and transfer. That's done. CPU mine and seven cores. So I was mining um, Avian coin on this. So there you go. So you could literally copy that batch file and put it in the shell start, and that would automatically. Um, I just have to put the current folder location in there. going to be on CCON, matter. CD backslash CD control V. So if we put that batch file into G 
to there. So we'll give you a little demo. Let's close this down. So we will reboot it. So yeah, like I was saying before, there's, there's a lot of changes that that script does to Windows. It strips a lot of stuff out, disables a lot of the services. I don't recommend you do that on your desktop computer unless you're just using specific options like you know disabling telemetry because it can disable other programs that you're using. But when you're mining, all you want is your mining software to run maybe one or two utilities, so it's not, not a big deal. But yeah, please do not run this on your home computer that you do a variety of stuff on your work computer, anything like that. So there we go, it's um, started up and because we put that batch file in that startup folder, it's automatically started mining. Now the issue is I've thought about having T-Rex do this, but with T-Rex and other miners, you need to run them as administrator. And that causes a problem because you need to, you know, if you run something as administrator like this, it comes up with a prompt. And you're not going to be there when it automatically reboots because of a power outage to press yes. So uh, apparently you can... Task scheduler is probably the most promising, but I've every time I've tried, I haven't been able to get it to work. So there's probably a couple of tweaks that I have to do. So once I've figured that out, I'll probably make a part two of this video, how to start auto mining on the custom version of Windows. But um, yeah, apart from that, that's pretty much it. So um, I'll leave the links in the description down below. Yeah, the old unused blog site. <laughs> Rufus and ISO downloader. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll uh, do my best to help you, provided it's a sensible question. So yeah, that's it. I'll uh, catch you next video. Thanks.